what in actuality does narcissistic abuse from your perspective and, and, and from your helping others, what is narcissistic abuse literally smell, feel, and taste like? You know, that's such a great question, Paxton, because that's exactly right. Honestly, I've that's probably the most common comment that I get, which is that I'll be describing a situation and then yeah. people recognize that's my situation. I didn't know that there was a name for this. I didn't understand that this is actually called narcissistic abuse. And, uh, and because I was explaining how they might be feeling, they actually come to the realization that that's what they are experiencing themselves. So I, I want to make sure that I say that only because there are different types of narcissists, right? So their narcissism isn't just one thing. It doesn't look, feel, uh, uh, come across as just one uh, thing because there's different types of narcissists. And of course, the personality of the specific narcissist will also come across in the way that they do abuse. Um, but just for people to kind of get a uh, get some kind of grid point for what we're talking about, we are talking about um, feeling like they're never heard, right? That their partner or that the, the person that they think they suspect of being a narcissist lacks empathy that they that it's always all about them that they're uh feeling as though they're um kind of being brought along for the ride of the show which is all about the narcissist so they're never center stage and if there should be a reason why they do get center stage such as promotion or uh, a birthday even any kind of thing that puts somebody else in center stage, it's quickly removed by the narcissist who cannot uh, stand to share the limelight. They wow. feel entitled to things. They believe that they are more important than other people. They must constantly have the praise, attention, and recognition of other people. And this doesn't have a limit, right? Even if it's clear that that type of behavior is not being rewarded in the in the system that they are performing those behaviors in. The narcissist doesn't care. They don't have the um, the ability to say, "Okay, that's inappropriate." Mm -hmm. They're so driven by uh, being the center of somebody else's attention, of receiving their praise, of their ad receiving their admiration, that they will continue to to do. Uh, their harmful behavior, even when it's not having the intended or desired outcome, it could be a boss, mm -hmm. it could be a parent, what have you, um, you're going to experience gaslighting. So in other words, you will feel as though there's consistent misrepresentation, lying, denial, manipulation mm -hmm. um, of, of your words and situations to make mm -hmm. you think that what you are experiencing never took place, has not happened, is not happening now. Um, it wow. it uh, makes you think that you can't trust yourself. Gaslighting's whole um, um, reason that narcissists employ this is to get you to doubt yourself and to rely more heavily on the narcissist so that the narcissist seems to be like the only person who knows your true north, the person who can wow. uh, really give you the uh, validity of the things that you've been experiencing are only found from your interaction with the narcissist. So um, I got I to gotta ask a question then, mm -hmm. because you, you mentioned misrepresentation. So this is deliberate than what you're saying. So the trauma bond, you're exactly right, can happen quite quickly for some people, less than two days. We're not talking about an extended period of time as we might right. imagine six months or um, yeah. a year, but two days of, of non-interrupted connection with that person is enough to develop this trauma bond. And through the trauma bond is how the narcissist is able to, the, the trauma bond is basically the tool the narcissist use or the road the narcissist use to make an inroad with their victim so that they can employ things such as gaslighting, passive aggressive behavior. Um, you know, uh, uh, I was just joking, sarcastic Ooh, statements, wow. things like that. And wow. so they will use the fact that they know that that person is trauma bonded to them. In other words, they are, are addicted to the way that they feel when they are with or around that person. And the narcissist is very well aware of that. So great question. It does not need to be a long period of time, meaning uh, over a year, dealing with yeah. this for over a year. It's easy to um, 
to lose who, who you are, your sense of self, your self of self, uh, your self sense of identity, um, yeah. your self esteem and things of that nature. And when this happens, you can absolutely see that the um, abuse is escalating during this time because the narcissist knows that there isn't any uh, limit uh, that they, they could push you to that you wouldn't be willing to, to take at that point. But mm-hmm. actually the whole time they're playing with that person's mind and emotions and their heart. Absolutely. And it's the initially what a lot of people um, experience when the narcissist makes their um, debut into the victim's life is that they start believing that they're very misunderstood. Uh, the narcissist oh. is misunderstood <laughs> that they, they feel extreme sympathy for the narcissist. Um, and a lot of people who are, um, who will entertain narcissists at this stage simply yeah. are not aware that there could okay. potentially even be people who would say or do yeah. something to them that's harmful to them on purpose, because in their mind, they could never do that. Right. And so the the ability from them to be able to say, yeah, there's people out there who would actually lie to me, manipulate me. um, And also that it would be for their gain. The, The person that they that they pick, they are able to read very well. They know that this person has a strong codependent traits. Uh, mm-hmm. that this person will not set boundaries, that this person would be easy to isolate and ultimately manipulate for whatever end state the narcissist had in mind. Reality of it is, this is real. This actually happens to people more than others may even think of, maybe just because it hasn't happened to them yet. Mm-hmm. It probably happened to somebody they know or in their family line. What you don't understand uh, from the outside looking in, what a lot of people Mm -hmm. can't understand is that during this phase of the trauma bonding being formed uh, is that there's an extreme element of love bombing. You know, this is Mm -hmm. where the person makes the the victim uh, feel like you know, they just can't survive without them. They're everything that they've been looking for, waiting for. They, um, they just simply can't go on without them. Their, uh, their undying love is professed <laughs> instantly. Oh, wow. And crazy. this has the emotional and mental trigger to, uh, to allow our brains to dump a ton of chemicals that make us addicted to the feeling that we get when we're around the narcissist, extreme amounts of oxytocin uh, are being released into the bloodstream at this point, which is further strengthening the trauma bond, because you're going to want to believe that this person, yeah, this love right. bombing person, the, yeah. the version of the narcissist doing that is the real uh, version of the narcissist. It's not until later on that you're going to discover that these cycles of ups and downs and all arounds, these roller coasters are deliberate, they're intentional, and they're to make you uh, further trauma bonded to the narcissist and uh, and that they ha- happen quickly enough for you to not have time to sit and reflect. It's designed so that you will not have the time to mm analytically look at the situation and say to yourself, this has been happening for far too long. I can't deal with this. I can't go up and down. Um, you know, I can't do that anymore. And it's done deliberately. This is a very fast paced situation where you won't have time to, uh, actually look at the big picture. You'll just be so consumed with how you're feeling at this moment. And that's by design. But Mm -hmm. just as surely as I get the love bombing angel, you're telling me now that then they're going to go, what's the next phase? So love bombing, Mm -hmm. in other words, what are the stages? I'm just curious. I'm just asking. Yeah. So it will always start with the love bombing phase. The next will be, will come with the devaluation in this phase. The narcissist wants you to know that you're nothing to them. You could never make it without them. You are not ever going to survive. You couldn't hope to get somebody as, you know, great as them again, you better, you know, recognize how good you've had it with them, et cetera, et cetera. That's the devaluation phase. You're going to say, what's the next one? The next phase is going to be devalue, or I'm sorry, discard, meaning, you know, I can't do this with you anymore. You're such a loser. I have to cut you out like you're.